Hey folks, Mel the Train Tutor back in the studio and back with the Fabled Realms build. Now, if you don't know what the Fabled Realms build is, it's a project we're working currently on in the studio. Foreground have uh, been bringing out their, their, their game and it's a skirmish game based in their world, the Fabled Realms. And as part of this process, they had a map drawn up and this is it here. Okay, now when I saw this map, I wanted to build it and I said, so, can I build it? And so we've started to build it, okay? And this is how far we got last time, yeah? And we're continuing from this point now, okay? So, the last update has gone online and we've had, I've had a massive response with regards to how to sculpt the mountains and people reckon sculpting out of dash or clay or something like that seemed to be the way, way to go, so definitely going to be looking at that. There's also been a lot of suggestions with regards to cities and how we're going to represent those on the maps and a lot of suggestions from the training acts and you find folks of different th companies I should check out, that sort of stuff. Now I've got a call with Adam tomorrow, yeah, from Foreground, so I'm going to have a chat with him about it because that's sort of reaching out externally, you know what I mean. Yeah, and we'll see where it goes. So more on that later in this bit, hopefully. Yeah, but what we need to do now is continue with this. Okay, now I came in and we've had a heat wave here for the past couple of days and I've come into the studio and my board's warped. <laughs> Seriously, it's only a few mil but it's definitely warped. Okay, now here's the thing, there is not enough PVA on this board to warp it. There just simply isn't, it's warped in places where there isn't PVA to warp it. Okay, so what's going on? What I reckon has happened is it's the heat wave. I think what's happened is the heat wave has excessively dried the top exposed surface. And any residual moisture in there, yeah, has evaporated out. Obviously it's lost volume, which means the top surface has shrunk and that's raised the edges. Okay, and it's not something that happens very, very often. You know, one, we don't have heat waves in Britain that often, and two, it's rare you're working with this much exposed MDF for, you know, it can, you could get slight issues with small scale base built because it's so small. Yeah, the amount of warping, you just don't see it. But with this being four foot, its longest edge, it's actually showing up. And it's only a few mil, but it's there. Now, what to do about it? Because the last thing I wanted was this for, the, for this to warp. Yeah, I could get my airbrush out and give it a spray of water, let that water absorb, re-expand the top and equalize. Yeah, overall, I'm not going to worry too much. I have a feeling now it's cooler, cooler, yeah? It will absorb some of the moisture in the air and sort of self-level itself. If it doesn't, I have a couple of options. Now, first off, yeah, assuming it doesn't warp anymore, it's only a couple of mil. I know this is getting mounted in a picture frame, so it makes sense that that would brace it. So, I'll have a chat with Adam tomorrow when we have, when we have our chat and see whether, you know, that's an option. The other option is, while I work on this, I could fix some battens on it. Uh, another option is, I have another four foot by roughly three foot piece of MDF, yeah? Cut from the same sheet, that's just down there. I could bring that on and I could screw this sheet down onto that sheet, and that would fix the problem because that would brace it. Yeah, and on top of that, you know, I've got that sheet, I've got clamps, we can warp it back. So I've got a load of different options and I'm not, quite at the stage where I need to be getting concerned about fixing it, yeah, just yet. Okay, if it gets worse, we'll have to take remedial action. But at the minute, we should be okay, yeah? We'll be able to fix it, if you know what I mean. Right, so, that was the idea. <laughs> That's the idea. A little bit of doubt in me there, isn't there? Yeah, there is. We'll be fine, absolutely fine. I'm worrying over nothing. It's just it's just throw mode, which wasn't expecting it to have warped. But there's a heat wave for you, you know? I think I recorded it was 39 at the hottest in this studio yesterday, so that is gonna dry it out. Uh, I've let some cool air on it today, see if it settles down. If I need to bend it, warp it, brace it. Yeah, we can do that, that's not a problem. But we need to move forward with the build, because time is ticking. Okay, and it's time to start shaping the lands. Now, I'm about to start a live show, yeah? So this is this this next bit of work will have been done live. And if you want to watch or see the live show, yeah, I'll throw a link up to it just up there. Yeah, and you can see what we did. 
Okay. Now, what my aim for in the live show is, I'm going to be coming along and I want to sort of reduce the height around the coast on this. Yeah, and I'm going to be using a hot wire cutter. Yeah, I need to reduce the height because it's just too tall. Okay. After that, next job for tonight is I want to lay down the watch it, the sort of I want to start getting the details, I want to know where the cities are, where the mountains are, where the rivers are, where the roads are, because that's going to affect our stylings, which will be our next job after we've beveled the edges. Yeah, now obviously I've got the map, but I want them on the map so I can physically see. And I get a feeling, okay, for the land. Now, uh, so that's the battle plan tonight. Bevel the edges, yeah. I don't think we'll get on to sanding to be perfectly honest and I'll be honest with you, sanding doesn't make the best live show, you know what I mean? Yeah, so bell the edges, then work through the maps. I've got one there, I've got another one hanging up there. I'll, send, I'll show you a photo. And that's the battle plan. Get the details from those maps, so that one there, that one there, yeah. And crack on. Now, you, the keen eye of you will notice something there. Okay, yes, this is my tester board. Okay, now I mentioned this at the end of the last episode. With this project, I don't want to be working things out on the actual board. And so what I did is I got a load of offcuts and I basically glued them all down. Okay, and to give me something to actually work on and try the techniques before I actually work on the actual main board. Yeah, basically, I just don't want to cock up the main board trying to figure things out, you know what I mean? Yeah, so that's the battle plan and that's my test board. So, any techniques I'm a bit cautious about or anything I really want to demo and that sort of stuff, I've got a tester board for. Yeah, so, there we are. You are caught up and it is time to catch on. So, next job I've got to do is get bevel in this. So, better get cracked on, hadn't I? We're getting stuck into the actual cutting it out and beveling things down. I've got to say, it's hot as hell in here now still. We're back with the heat and I'm working with hot tools and the fumes, they're quite interesting. I really should talk to the, to the studio managers, yeah, about getting an extractor fan. So let me show you what I'm doing, guys, okay? Let's go down to the table. So if you look at this piece, you'll notice that it's beveled down more than this piece. And this is part of the process that I'm talking about. What I don't want is, see these, if I come along and try and sand that top bit, I'm gonna break it that little bit there. So I want to cut them down, because if you cut them down, they become a lot more sturdier for when, they, when we get to shaping them. Now I'm only interested, yeah, I'm not interested in reducing the overall height of the piece. Yeah, I'm more interested in reducing just around the edges and for doing it I'm using a hot wire foam factory uh, what shall I wire cutter yeah I've got the tensioner on if you get one of these get the tensioner guys yeah it's a lifesaver now all I'm doing is I'm coming along and essentially I'm putting this down I'm angling it yeah so I can get a nice bevel and I'm bringing it along that edge so if I bring it down And you can immediately see how that's taken that edge off, okay, lowered it down, but still giving me the height for when I need to add my mountains and my sanding and that sort of stuff. So if I come around here, yeah, it's, it is a matter of coming in from different directions and just trying to cut it the best you can. Okay, now, I did have some problems with this, yeah, and the problem I, the problem I was having was with situations like these. Yeah, where it's too sort of tight, yeah, to actually get your tool in. Okay, so in that case, you just gotta use a blade and open it up a bit. So in this case, you know, come in and just cut it down like that because you can just get it in better. Yeah, so that's the battle plan. I'm doing the bulk of the work with my hot wire cutter. Yeah, but I'm, I've got my backup blade just to sort of get in the niggly bits that I can't get into. So to finish this one off, we're just coming in, we're angling down, and we're dragging it across. And we're sort of moving with the, with the contour, yeah? The reason being why we're moving is we're keeping an equal distance 
from that point to the edge of the island, which is sort of given as a rough, even level head, yeah, because it's only a certain height from there up. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. Obviously, it's a little bit there. It's it's a it's varying a little. Okay, but that's not really a problem because we know we're going to sand it. And so that's the task in hand. I've just simply got to work my way around, slowly do all of these edges and get it getting a more, it's already feeling a little bit more organic, okay? But yeah, I need, before I can start sanding it and shaping the hills and all that sort of stuff and creating the mountains, I've just got to get these edges down, guys. So, it's going to be a long one, but I crack on, haven't I? So it's taken a couple of hours, uh, I managed to dodge cutting myself, but I did manage to burn myself, so pretty standard Mel carving foam session. Right, do you want to take a look? It looks beautiful. Here you are, come and have a look. So there we are, there we have the fabled realms. And as you can see, yeah, I've got all the bevels in. A lot of them, there's still a little bit of a sharp edge, but I know I'm going to be going in and sanding this and shaping it, so I can clean that up. But I've done a lot of work with the knife as well to sort of clean it up and, and to get the shapes just right. These areas over here where you have the inlets and the fjords, yeah, uh, they were quite challenging because I couldn't get my hot wire cutter into them. I was really struggling, yeah. And so what I had to do in that situation was to switch over to a blade and come in and literally just cut them out. Which means they're a little bit more rough and ready than the other pieces. But that's not a problem because I know we're going to be sanding this. Yeah, but already it's looking absolutely awesome. Yeah, here, take a look at this pick. See what I mean? You can already see the land coming together. The islands are looking brilliant. I'm already falling in love with it. You know, I always have like... I always have doubts when I do commissions and stuff like that. I have talked about this a lot and I have a lot of doubts over my ability and whether it's up to standard and that sort of stuff. I've got to say this is the first project where even though I've got more doubts about the challenges that I'm facing going into the project, I've never felt so happy about it. You know what I mean? So anyway, yeah, a couple of hours done. We've done it in the live stream. If you'd like to watch and sort of watch me crack on with this, then you can. Yeah, I will throw a link up. Yeah, and you can watch the live stream. Obviously, you can't take part of it. But remember, Thursdays at seven o'clock is the Fable Realms live build while I'm building on this session. And that's UK time. So if you want to jump in, yeah, uh, it'll be after this update video, obviously, because this will be going out on the Thursday. So it'll be the night this video goes out. You can come join the crowd. They're all there. They're all, you know, you can see them on the screen there. They're all taking the mick out of me. Yeah, but it's been a brilliant night, it really has. Uh, I would have liked to have got a little bit further because I wanted to map out where the mountains were and that sort of stuff, but I don't mind. Yeah, because what I have done, I'm very proud of. Yeah, so, we'll have a quick skip and then I'll be back in the morning ready to mark out the mountains. See you in a sec. Right, start of a fresh day, start of a fresh weekend. We are picking this up from where we left it on the Sunday live show. Now, we beveled it all down and we start. We were getting ready to start sculpt the landscape. Now, in the meantime, I've had a chat with Adam. We've got a few things going on with the board, so I just want to bring you up to speed. First off, the warping issue. Now, over the weekend, it's got a lot cooler. The warping has dropped down. It's a couple of mil either side. Yeah, it's nowhere near as significant as it was when I left it. So I'm a lot happier about that. I'm still going to have to brace it, I think. Now, Adam was planning, Adam, the guys at Foreground were planning on doing a frame and I was hoping that was going to brace it. I had a chat and I think I'm going to end up doing a simple frame for it. Yeah, and we'll have to take it from there. Uh, hmm. So that's another job I've got to sort out. Yeah, we'll get it sorted. I've got this inch rim, so I'm thinking, say, inch by half an inch batten. I might batten it at the top and at the bottom. It depends on whether I can get this warping corrected, yeah, by bracing it first and sort of bending it back to the right place. And we'll see how we go. But we've got options, so I'm not overly concerned. Moving on, I've got 
a couple of jobs to do today, yeah, and they're all sort of more admin -y jobs than creating the land. There's a little bit of work to do, but first off, I need to plan out where all the, watch clip, place names are going to go. I've got a map there, which is why I'm waving up that way. But if we look down at the map, yeah, I've got to figure out where I can put place names on the map. Yeah, and how much room, yeah, we've got for those place names. Now, the reason for this is because Adam's going to laser cut me the, the place names. So all I have to do is paint them up and that sort of stuff. But for him to do that, I need to figure out how big they need to be. So that's one of my jobs I need to do today. Yeah, the other job that I need to do today is just work out on the map, yeah, where, what you call it, where the rivers would be and where the, what you call it, where the mountain areas would be. Now, the logical thing to do would have, when I was engraving all the outlines here, yeah, would be to engrave those in at the same time. Hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? <laughs> but Mel didn't have any hindsight on this case, so we've got to do it now. Uh, so that's the job, yeah? Uh, we've got a layout where the mountains are going to go. We've got a layout where the what you call it, where the rivers are going to go. Not so concerned about the roads just at the minute. Yeah, rivers tend to affect the line of the terrain. I'm going to need valleys and that sort of stuff for the rivers to flow through. Whereas roads will go over hills, so I can put them on later. Yeah, we've also got the idea of where the woods are going to go, but that's more laying it out. I don't need to sort of engrave or do anything with that just yet. Now we do need to do the mountains. Yeah, now we've had a couple of ideas on that, but I'm going to skip to that when we get around to actually prepping the mountains. And I'll explain what I'm doing then. So in the meantime, I've got some engraving to do. Crack on. Right, I've completed my marking out. So all I did is I pinned the map straight back on top of the board and did my engraving and that sort of stuff. If I bring the map up, you can see that it's marked with all sorts of new markings. Yeah, I've had to mark down uh, the major cities. Yeah, there's 16 of those. Uh, the geographical locations, I was to make a note of for foreground, there's 22 of those. There's 21 Watch for the unnamed, lo sorry, 51 unnamed locations that I have to mark down. And on top of that, I've also laid down, what you call it, engraved, where the mountains are and where the rivers are. Now, if I pull this map off, yeah. And then show you the board, you can see that. I've gone over with marker pen to keep an idea of where the mountain ranges are gonna be all over the map. Okay, now there's that lot in there, a bit down here and a bit down here. The reason being is obviously the mountains are going to be the high ground, so I want to make sure that as I'm sanding and I'm shaping, I know where it's supposed to be higher. Okay, but that's not all I've done. I've also marked in the rivers. Now, whereas the mountains need to be higher, okay, the rivers, obviously, they're, they're going to be in the valleys, so I need to sort of shape those down. Now, all I'm going to do is, I'm going to zoom the camera in quickly, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this. Now we've got here the river that runs from Alavata up into the east, south, east grass fells, this area here. And what I want to do is, I'm going to be sanding this down. Now, I've engraved it originally, yeah, through marking through the map, but as I sand it, that's going to disappear. So what I need to do is I need to create a deeper river that when I sand, I don't have to worry that I'm gonna sand out my markings of where my river's gonna be. And for that, I'm using this. It's a hot knife, okay? Uh, hot wire foam factory. And it is a simple matter of just coming in. And just dragging it along the river system. Yeah, just where I've engraved. Go nice and slow says and there we are it's all engraved in now you may turn around and say yeah boastical but isn't that going to be a bit deep for your river yeah it is but i'm going to be going over this with a coating and the coating will fall into the crack and smooth it out but still leave me with a recess that's going to be easy to paint so i can sand over this without worrying about losing my river i when it comes to the coating i know i'm not going to have any problems because it will just fill in yeah so Hopefully, I'm on a win with that one. Now I've got a couple more rivers to, to sort out, and then I've got to start actually shaping it and sanding it, which means getting rid of these edges and making it a little bit more natural. So that's the next task. Better get cracked on, Anna. 
Right guys, the sanding of the valleys has begun and you can see the sort of whiter areas where I've started to sort of copy over where I did my hot tool engraving, my hot tool, my hot knife engraving. Okay, and I've sanded it down to get that valley area in. I've also come along the coastline and I'm starting to sand down at the edge of the coastline just to make it look a little bit more organic and take the sort of harsh edge off it. Now when it comes to sanding, it's really simple. Okay, all I'm doing is I'm picking a river Okay, I'm going along with the river. And there's a lot of friction generated. It's actually getting quite hot. Okay, come in with the brush. Should have brought me Hoover, shouldn't I? And there's my valley. Now, I'm not too worried about using sandpaper to shape all the areas in between the valleys. I'm coming in with filler and stuff like that so I can get a bit of sort of undulating ground to that using the filler, yeah? But I do need to get my valleys in first. And with regards to the coastline, all it is is... Just a little bit of sanding, and it makes a massive amount of difference, yeah? So, my next job is... I've got to do all of this. I'll see you in a few hours, guys. Well, that was a long sanding session. I think about four hours to actually get all the coastlines and everything sanded down. But if we look at it, yeah, you can see that everything is starting to look a lot more natural when it comes to the landscapes. I put in all my river valleys. Yeah, and they're looking good. Now, obviously I can't raise the landscape beyond the, the blue foam. We're gonna use filler to do that and have a play with that. But with regards to getting my depressions and getting all the angles down, done, yeah, it's gone really well. I've lost a couple of sort of like little nukes, sort of like, what are they called? Pinnacles? Someone tell me in the comments what the bits of rock that stick out are called. I've forgotten what they're called, but I've lost a few of those. Yeah, only a couple, and I don't think it's a major deal breaker. Yeah, so overall, we should be fine. Yeah, uh, the next job I've got to do is First off, the board's warped a little, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah, now I've got some clamps. I borrowed some clamps off a friend. I've got another board there. I'm going to basically put something underneath it. Yeah, specifically, three mil PVC, slap band in the middle. And then I'm going to use that and, and watch it bend the edges back down. Now I'm going to be battening this up anyway, so that's going to deal with it. But I just want to sort of counter warp it for a little while. Yeah, just see if I can take a little bit of that warp off before I batten it. Yeah, but overall, I'm not concerned on that count. Now, there is another job I need to do before I go home, and that's for basically to prep tomorrow's work. My plan is I'm going to do the rocks, yeah, using uh, tinfoil moulds. Now, we've done a video on this on the channel, yeah, and I'll throw a link up to it. And it's a technique where you use tinfoil to basically scrunch it up and you can make rock moulds out of it and loads of different suggestions for making rocks a load of people are saying well perhaps go with a foam substructure and clad it with like das or something like that sculpt it a few people suggested cutting lots of little bits out of cork or thin foam and making stacks and then carving those but i thought they're all going to be a lot of work a lot of work and when someone mentioned, why did you use the foil moulds that you used on the on you know on that tutorial? It was like, yeah, that's a genius idea. So that's the idea. That's what I'm going to go for. So the first thing I need to do, yeah, to prep that for tomorrow, is to prep my foil. Now, use standard kitchen foil for it, tin foil, okay. But what we do is we we layer it, okay, and paint PVA between the layers to stiffen it up so it can actually take the casting because if you just use one sheet, one sheet is not enough, yeah, yeah, it will just, when you fill it with the cast material, it'll just flatten out. So I need to put about four or five sheets of tin foil, glue them all down and put them down and I need to watch call it, I need to brace this, which are my final jobs for today. So I'm going to get cracked on with that and I'll see you in the morning guys. So a fresh day, I've come in and I've unclamped it and it's pretty much sorted that warping. Okay, I've got a warp of what I'd call, say about one mil, 
maybe two. Okay, and just to put that in context, how I work it out is, you get a straight edge ruler, and you put it at one tip of the board, and you put it at the other tip of the board. And obviously, if it's warped, it goes up. Ruler across the top, there's a gap between the middle and the top of the ruler if it warps up. And that's currently about one, maybe two millimeters, which is nothing to be concerned about. So that's, that's a fix. I might do it, I might clamp it again tonight just to take it a little bit over and then let it naturally settle up, which will completely sort it. But like I said, I'm not concerned about that, so don't be concerned about boards warping, you know. Use a bit of brute force, you can get them back, easy enough. And like I say, this is going to be framed, so it's going to be bracketed anyway. So I'm not overly concerned. Right, sanding was done yesterday, it's looking pretty good. I've come in and there's a couple of spots that, you know, I think that I missed, or I could have done a little bit better. So I'm probably going to be touching those up today. Yeah, just a little here and there, just, you know... Just a little, okay? Uh, moving on, today's real task, okay? It's going to be making our, what shall I, our mountains. Now, on the map itself, you can see that I've marked out all my little mountain regions, yeah? Obviously, we've got this massive mountain range, or I think it's actually one, two, three, four. There's four mountain ranges across there, so one, two, three, four. And then I think that's another mountain range, and that's another mountain range. That's a lot of mountain ranges, okay? But we've got to make some mountains for it. And there are a lot of what you call it, suggestions about how to make the mountains. Everything from getting uh, topographical maps of the Alps and 3D printing them. Smart idea. A lot of people were suggesting, well, you couldn't really do it out of dust, but perhaps foam substructure and then coat it with dust that you could shape and that sort of stuff. Yes, but a lot of work. A lot of work. Also, I'm not confident enough I could sculpt realistic mountains. I think, I think it'd become one of those jobs where it'd be involved a lot of swearing, you know what I mean, and a lot of fixing things, which is, I don't really want that in this project. This project is going really well for me. Okay, normally when I do commissions, I am constantly stressing about how I'm gonna do this or how I'm gonna do this, whereas this one's just been a joy. I did say it was a dream build for me. Yeah, literally, I've come in, how am I going to do this? I'll do it like this, easy peasy, we've just done it. <laughs> if the rest went like this, life would be sweet. But, yeah, we've got the mountains to do. Anyway, a few other people suggested we're maybe doing layers of foam or cork and then in circles and then you could shape them or add filler to them. That's certainly a good idea. But someone commented, and I think it was on Beasts of War, yeah, that... Why don't you use your tinfoil rock mold technique? And that was like genius. So, we prepped the tinfoil yesterday, and here it is, okay? Plenty, easily plenty, yeah? The sheets have dried and it's relatively thick. It's thick enough for what we need to do, okay? If I was doing big rock faces, that sort of stuff, I'd probably go with five sheets, yeah? But I've got three sheets on this and that will be plenty for what we need to do. So my next job is I need to go get my crystal and that sort of stuff. And then I need to basically set up, I'll come show you, I'll do a couple, then I'll come show you the technique and what the end results look like, guys. Yeah, but fingers crossed, we're on a winner with this. It's taken a little while to sort of figure this out, yeah, but let me show you what I've got. Okay, we've got our glued together tin foil sheets, three sheets, or plenty, yeah, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it, and fold it over again, yeah, and make sort of an M shape, okay? And this is our mold, so there's our, our M shape. Yeah, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pinch the ends, and if I bring them over, I'm gonna fold them over, like that. And the reason I'm folding them over is if I don't, when we pour our casting stuff in, it's all going to pour out. So they're folded over and we have our little gap. Now we're going to stick a finger in and make it a little bit wider. And then fold these little flaps over. Yeah, like that. So we end up with that. Just got to re-pinch pinch these off. And then finally, yeah, we want to come in and we just want to make sure that We've got a nice good peak right at the bottom and widen it open a bit. And you end up with something that looks like that. Now you know what it looks like and if you don't know what it looks like I'm not going to tell you. But I've got lots of them all over my desk. 
yeah and these are our molds that we're going to be working from that's probably a little bit too deep actually let me just flatten that out a bit okay so these are our molds okay next job I've got some water in here and it's got a little bit of flow aid yeah uh, you can use a, a tiny drop of dish detergent rather than proper flow aid yeah just in with a little bit of water and all I'm doing is I'm, I'm brushing it in between and writing down into the bottom of all these pieces and this is going to help that the watch called the casting powder flow into all our little nooks and crannies and make sure we don't get air bubbles at the bottom yeah, you don't have to worry about doing it over the whole mould, it's mainly just at the very peaks, yeah, which are the very bottom of the mould. So, very quickly in, brush all these. So they've all got their flow aid in, and I've got a little plastic cup in, and it's got Cristocal in. Now Cristocal is a, a casting powder, it's a mixing ratio of sort of 60% Cristocal and 40% water, so I want to pour to about there. Yeah? and then start stirring it. Now Cristocal is actually a mold making casting powder. I actually found out off one of the ceramics got like girls in, what you call it, in Spode that they use it for casting glass because it can resist high temperatures. Yeah, now, it doesn't take long to stir up, that's it pretty much done. Yeah, but the reason we use it is because it cures and sets in about 10-15 minutes, which means we can batch process and do things like Hearst Arts moulds and stuff and really knock them out. We're not waiting hours for it to cast. So that's it all poured off, all mixed up. Next job, I'm going to start pouring it into my foil moulds. Yeah, I'm not trying to fill it to the top, I just want to just... Get some in each one. Now you will get spills. This is what I've got this uh, bin bag down for, so it doesn't get all over my desk. And you are going to get messy, yeah. But the results, I think, you're going to like. It did take a little while to work this one out. I'm probably another half a day behind where I wanted to be because the first lot just were rubbish and the second lot, and the third lot, and then it took a little while to sort of figure the process out. So overall build wise, I'm probably a day behind, but I'm not too concerned because the name tags that I need to continue the build, well, they're not gonna turn up for another day or two, so I'd, I'd be, I've got that time anyway. You know what I mean? Because I'd have to knock it back because I'm waiting for these name tags from foreground. Yeah, and I'm not going to have those in time to continue the build tomorrow. So I've got a day tomorrow where I can play catch up. So that's all good. Now these are curing. A little bit of tapping, just shake them about a bit. They're going to take about 15 minutes. That's got any spare in there. Got any spare in there. Let's top that one up. If you do get any leaks and they sink down like this one here, yeah, wait till they set a bit because the setting will block and block up the leak and then pour some of your leftover in. And all will be well. Yeah, and so there you have it guys. That's pouring the, our rock moulds, yeah, our mountain moulds. Oh, I'm not sure how that one's going to come out. Yeah, I'm going to go for a brew. When we come back, I'll show you as we demould them and I'll talk you through the next stage, yeah? Right, I'm going for a brew. It's been about 20 minutes, so these are well set now. It's time to start unpeeling them. Yeah, and so basically unfold the corners. Yeah, you want to do this because you want to, you don't want to rip them apart because you want to reuse these molds. The more you actually use them and the more crinkly they get, the better the rock effect to be truthful, but it's sort of a balance. The more crinkly they get, the more likely, yeah, they are to sort of wear and break and get holes in them. Yeah, so it's sort of a double-edged sword. So let's get this one out. So that's one out. Yeah, and if I bring it up to the camera, yeah, you can see that. Now you can see really sharp ridges and weird folds. That's because the tin foil on this one is relatively fresh. If I go over to one that I've used a lot, yeah, which is, as you can see, a lot more crinklier than that one. So you see that's, that's got some quite sharp, defined lines, but in a lot of flat areas, that's crinkled to hell. Yeah. If we sort of unfold this one, I'm going to be careful because I don't want to break it because I want to reuse these as much as possible. Yeah. Then what we get is, 
Come on. Come on, you. Oh, I think I've got a stuck bit. Yeah, I've got a fold. It's, it's folded over, actually, in it. And it's caught the foil. So let's see what we get. And then this, this one may be done and dusted now, which is a shame because it looks like it would have been a bloody good one. Oh, take that bit off. We've got a winner. If I bring that up, yeah. Do you see how the crinkles give it a lovely effect? Okay. Now we've got things like if I turn this over, yeah, we've got like that ridge that's folded over. They do take a little bit of work afterwards. What you've got to do is come in, and because it's still soft, you can still break bits off. So come along and just look where, where the, it doesn't look quite right, and just come in with your nail, yeah. And just break it down a bit. So break that off a bit. A bit of scratching. Yeah, and it's looking better already as a ridge line. Yeah, and if I turn it round, that lovely rock texture. Now if I come back to this one, okay, where we've got our big folds. What I'm gonna do is same thing, I'm gonna start breaking it off. Yeah. Chip over any real big overhangs because they don't look natural, yeah? And it starts to come together a lot better. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I put it flat down, I get a metal file with a nice sharp point on it, and I just start scratching over it. Now the reason I'm doing this is, remember when I said about the big blank areas? Yeah, those big, those big, big blank areas, <laughs> those big blank areas, yeah? They they make it look unrealistic, and so by just scratching it and coming along and scratching it along, and breaking up some of those lines, you end up with something that looks more like that, which I think we can all agree is pretty bloody nice. Now. Next stage is obviously, I've got to leave these to dry. They need 24 hours to properly dry. I either cured enough to demold in about 15 minutes, but really you want them to dry and so that they don't, they don't make this sort of, that noise, they make a chink, yeah, when all the moisture's gone out of them. But what I want to do is very quickly, I want to take it over to the board and show, show a few of these pieces in context so you can see. So let's move over there. So here we've got the Brigandish Isles, yeah? If I come along and what should we go for? Yeah, we can go for that one on there, and we drop that one in there. Yeah, and you can see our mountains are growing on our isles. We've got another one here. We can drop that one, perhaps turn it around that way. Yeah, and that's gonna give us our mountains there. And you can see how it looks, and to be perfectly honest, it looks beautiful, guys. I'm really chuffed with how they've turned out. It did take a lot of figuring out, yeah, because like I say, I started off with things that were looking a bit like that, but actually a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, but now I've worked it out, I'm quite happy with the results, and we get cracked on. So I need to make a load of these, because I've got a ton of mountains to sort of fill in. I've got some big ones to do as well. Yeah, so that's going to be my job for the rest of today and probably a bit of tomorrow. It's getting pretty messy in here. I've got Chris the Cal all over me, all over the floor, the desk, but the mountains are coming together. Come on here. Yeah, and as you can see, I've started to lay in the Brigandish Isles and I'm playing around with testing with the main watch clip. Uh, rock areas. I'm probably going to make some bigger castings for that to be perfectly honest. But above all, I really do like the way the rocks are turning out. They they look good. Yeah, so a big win for me because I mean the rock, do, how to sculpt the mountains, it was a challenge if you remember reaching out. And listen, to everyone who came forward with ideas and stuff like that, thank you. Yeah, to whoever mentioned the foil, brilliant. Thanks for reminding me of the technique. It's turned out really well, with a bit of tweaking, but I've taken you along for the ride so you can see how that works. Yeah. Now, my next task is, like I say, I'm a day behind, but I'm not going to get the name and the place tags, which I need yeah, for the stage after this, Yeah, until probably Friday, maybe Saturday. And so I've got a day spare at least, so I'm going to play catch up tomorrow. Now, if you'd like to see where I get caught up tomorrow, remember, yeah, 
Uh, tomorrow will be Thursday, that's when this video will come out, and then tomorrow night, 10 o'clock, sorry, 7 o'clock till about half 10 UK time, I'll be working on this live in the studio on my channel. Okay, so if you'd like to see how it progresses beyond this video, and like to have an hour, come and join the live, you know, live show and join the chat. Uh, moving forward, obviously, yeah, if you've liked it, make sure you comment down below and let me know what you're thinking and any ideas and that sort of stuff. Our banter as usual. And if you're interested in following the project along in between the video updates, yeah, which, come, which will be coming every Thursday, you can jump over to Beasts of War, where I'll be posting sort of mid mid video watch it photo updates as well so you can keep track of the project more closely over there there's a link in the description how to go over to there and it's a free membership yeah so you don't need a link to view you don't need a membership to view the pictures but if you want to comment and that sort of stuff and, and join in the chat over there yeah you, you can get your free membership yeah and then just join in the chat there's no charge or whatever so you can either join in over here you can join in over there but either way or you can join in live either way come join in you know what i mean yeah, and in the meantime, guys, I am going to love you and leave you. Yeah, so, uh, I've, as always, if you've liked it, like it. Always comment, let me know what you think, let me know what you see. Let me know what you think of the filming of this as well, as we're getting into it and I'm showing stuff and that sort of stuff. I'm quite enjoying it, to be truthful. And finally, as always, guys, yeah, if you do like these videos, yeah, the filming of this project and the sharing of the techniques and all the editing and the filming and the post-production that involves is all supported by you wonderful people, okay? And it's done via PayPal or Patreon. Now, you can either jump on Patreon and pledge $1 a month, yeah, and just help keep me producing these videos. Or if you're not into the monthly thing, there's a link down below to my PayPal and you can send a digital pint via PayPal, yeah, to say thanks for the video, I'll crack on. Either way, yeah, you keep me in here, you keep me producing these videos for you guys, and you keep me in my happy place. Yeah, and it's always good to see a man happy, isn't it? So, guys, if you like it, please consider supporting it. And in the meantime, guys, I will say I will see you later when we'll be cracking on with this and making some big mountain ranges. Later, guys. ta -da.